Hey, what's going on, guys? I am Coach Tex from DFW Penguins, man. Penguin Hoops TV on IG. Um, Penguin Hoops and all of that good stuff, man. I'm the head coach, trainer, and founder of that organization. And uh, today, guys, I want to talk to you guys about in the game situations, five or six important things that you as a player, maybe even a coach, um, or as a parent, need to look out for at the end of games, close games especially. All right, so I'm going to get right into it. I don't want to be too long. Now, you guys that are my players, current players, this is stuff that I go by. These are five things. One of the, uh, uh, just five of the many things that I go by, but these are really important to me. And I think players and parents need to kind of know this, even if you um, ne never been a coach. Like, this stuff is important, and good coaches do these five things frequently. All right? Number one, as a player or a coach, know the foul count, the team foul count. Are you close to the bonus? Are you in the bonus? Are you far away from the bonus? Most basketball tournaments, most high school or um, grassroots basketball, you uh, in the second half, um, seven fouls is a bonus, which is a one and one You get to shoot one free throw and get another one. You get to 10, you or the other team shoots 10, or not 10, you or the other team shoots two free throws automatically. So knowing that makes a huge difference in the game and how you can play it. If I'm a team and I'm down... Let's say it's three minutes left and I'm down, I'm down five. Okay. If I have like three team fouls, that means I'm four or three fouls away or four fouls away from sending the other team to the line on purpose, on accident, whatever. Okay, so now in these three minutes, that probably means that a lot of players on the floor aren't in foul trouble as well. So we can do what? We can press, we can play harder, be more aggressive on defense to try to get steals, maybe even foul a little bit on purpose with the intention of trying to get a steal and the ref not calling it, right? Or if you're late in the game, you don't, let's say it's like one minute left or two minutes left, and you got two team fouls in the second half, right? Now, you know, it's like, man, I got to hurry up and try to foul, 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 foul on purpose, and that can hurt you if you got guys that possibly had foul trouble in the first half or they're out there, or it's going to take a long time for you to get, get to the bonus to send the team to the free throw line if you're down one or two with, with 30 seconds left or 45 seconds left. So basically a lot of times you lose unless you get steals because um, that team is far away from the bonus, if that makes any sense. So knowing the foul count, knowing if you're going to get fouled as well, um, if you guys are my players, you know, late in the game I'm, or just throughout the game, I'm always checking the foul count because it's so very important and you can change the whole game Basically, fouling the team can, can be a timeout for you. A lot of times you can talk to other players if you don't have any. There's so many different ways you can utilize the foul count in a basketball game. All right? So if you know that uh, the other team is going to foul and the foul count is close, you know, and you're trying to break the press or get your you, – you can get your get your best five free throw shooters out there if you have really good a really good free throw shooting team. Or you can take your worst one out so they don't foul him on purpose because you know that you're in the bonus and they're going to try to get a 1-1, one one, a 7 fouls, a 2 fouls. And if you got your worst free throw shooter out there on offense, they'll try to foul him on purpose or try to shade everyone else to getting him the ball, if that makes sense. All right? Um, another thing is very important. If you're a point guard, period, you got to pay attention to the clock. Know the rules of the clock. Where we play at, one of my teams play at, uh, well, when I say this, you got to know the rules because different tournaments have different rules with the clock. Different um, different leagues have different rules with the clock, so you never know. So let's say for some reason um, the clock stops under two minutes. Now you know, if just like we go back into fouling, if you foul, the clock stops. And if the team fouls you and you're behind, you can get make the free throws and catch up with the clock not running. But if you're on offense and you're trying to get the clock to run, just know how much time is on the clock, what you got to do in the situation. Also, very, very, very important is, um, let's say if it's, you know, you're down one or the game is tied and it's, it's five or six seconds left. You got to know how to count in your head or how many dribbles you can get off before you get a shot off. A lot of guys that I've had in the past, they're so worried about getting the shot off that they throw the ball up and half court instead of taking two more dribbles and getting to the free throw line and pulling up. 
Okay, if it's if it's six seconds left in in the uh, game, to me, that six or seven dribbles in the shot, right? But some guys they get panic, they get the ball up one one thousand, two one thousand, three shot, and it's three seconds left. The ball, yeah, of course the buzzer went off, but the ball was traveling in the air while the clock was running. So just knowing that, getting used to that, knowing, being aware of. Uh, being aware of the, the time on the clock is very, very, very important. All right. Um, if you're a coach, okay, or a player or a parent, let's say I have a kid that, um, let's say if I have a kid in the game that's not a good, um, that's not a good shooter, not a good free throw shooter, okay, you got to know. That coaches, smart coaches at the end of the game, they make situational subs. So situational sub could be a guy, let's say a guy barely got in the game, but he's a really good passer. Or he played baseball, and you're trying to throw a baseball pass um, to throw it deep or whatever it might be. Or he's just a good ball handler, a good pass maker, whatever it may be. Okay, or you need an extra ball handler in the game. Coaches that are smart will make certain situational subs at the end of the game instead of just leaving guys out there because they're the best five players that they had. At the end of the game, coaches that are smart, they use utility players for what they're good at. So, for example, let's say late in the game, I'm up three. The team has been pressing hard. They're trying to foul us. And I'm trying to throw a baseball pass. This kid that's on the bench that hasn't played much, played baseball. He has an amazing arm. He's a quarterback in high school, right? My best bet. Um, instead of leaving guys in that are, are in, he's really good at making passes and decisions. So I would leave him in the game, make him take the ball out, and that's my situational sub. Or let's say um, we're ha we've been having trouble rebounding against the team, right? So um, we just got fouled to sit to the free throw line. Okay, I know this guy on our team is going to make the second free throw. We're going so what I'm going to try to do to get back on defense and get some rebounding in, I might sub three guards out. Okay, and put three posts in there and have one ball handler for rebounding. Now, this is where it gets tricky. When you put those post players in or, or certain situational players in, you got to understand the variable of they may not be good at guarding a guard if they're out there, if it's a big guy, or if they do get the rebound, they get fouled, they might get sent to the line and miss free throws. So you got to be really strategic about that and be smart about it. You as a player, you got to know what your coach is doing and kind of read that. Okay, well, coach is not playing me right here because of this. Or he's trying to make this up because of this. So it's very important. Um, a really good coach has situational plays at the end of the game. Side out of bounds. Side out of bounds underneath. Side out of bounds on the corner. Um, um, plays to get guys the ball for free throws. All of this stuff is very important, and a lot of coaches don't go over this. And this is one of the main things that separates a, a okay coach from a great coach is going over situations, foul counts, all of this stuff, having situational plays, being able to draw up something off the top of your head that the other team hasn't seen, and also communicating it to your players and help them execute it. All right, so um, if, if your coach works on situational in-game situations, man, just know that that is very important. So instead of scrimmaging at the end of practice or something that he's going over 30 minutes of, of situational plays and, and going over, that is extremely good and, and very valuable to you and your teammates. Uh, number five, a smart coach always, always, listen to me, always saves one timeout for the end of the game. You can say that timeout for, let's say the game is tied or you're up two and it's a loose ball with 30 seconds left, right? You dive on it, right? Your coach doesn't have any timeouts. You dive on it and you travel. If a coach has one timeout left, this could be the, the play to save the game. He has a timeout. When you go and dive and grab that ball, he can automatically call a timeout for you. And now you have possession of the ball, right? Or um, let's say the other team calls a timeout, right? You're drawing up a play, it's a situational play at the end of the game. One guy, Bobby or Mike or Ricky, they're in the wrong place and they're setting up. And you're a coach and you're like, man, this is not going to work. But you know that if they were in the right, correct place, if you had a timeout, you, you know, you can switch it up and then the play will work correctly. Because sometimes get, kids don't get it, they get nervous. Players don't get it, they get nervous and make mistakes. 
but you have to have a timeout at the end of the game. Try to save one. If you can save two, that's great. But me, personally, you got to have a timeout left. One quick bonus. Hey, you guys that aren't on varsity or anything, or and you know if your basketball is, IQ is high or not, okay, if you have a really good basketball coach and he has a high basketball IQ, okay, don't call any timeouts for him, especially in the second half, okay, because timeouts are extremely valuable to coaches that, that understand the game. And a lot of times as a player, you're not keeping up with how many timeouts the team has. You guys all know – if you have, if you don't know about the Chris Webber situation in the championship when he called a timeout and they didn't have him, he didn't know how many timeouts the team has, right? And if you guys ever watched that documentary, one of his teammates actually was signaling him to call a timeout. And late in the game, guys get nervous. So if you don't know how many timeouts your team has in the second half, don't call a timeout for your coach, okay? Now, if your coach is horrible... And you have a high enough basketball IQ to know all of this stuff, know the foul count, all that stuff, check that stuff. Okay, you get in high school, you might have an assistant coach that's telling you that or you can go over to, he's charting it, and you're like, coach, how many timeouts we got left? What's the foul count? How many fouls do our big man have? Stuff like that. All that stuff, knowing that, is extremely important uh, to getting the advantage at the end of the game. So that was my last one. Do not call a timeout for your coach at the end of the game if you don't know how many timeouts they had, okay? And especially if your coach is, if you can tell that your coach really cares about his timeouts, don't do that. All right, well, basically that's it, guys. The information to contact me will be below. Visit the Penguin Instagram at Penguin Hoops, man. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. i love to answer anything you guys have for me. I hope this was educational for you. I hope you guys can get something from it, and I'll see you later.